당신이 기억하는 첫 이미지는 무엇인가요? 인간은 자신의 이미지를 남기고자 합니다. 멋지고 근사한 모습을 말이죠. 그런데 평범한 사람들은 자신의 이미지를 소유할 수 없었습니다. 이미지는 그렇게 권력과 부를 가진 소수만의 전유물이었지요. 그후 1826년 이것이 발명되었는데요. 바로 카메라입니다. 이제 사람들은 언제 어디서나 자신의 이미지를 만들고 볼수 있게 되었습니다. 자신의 이미지는 물론 사랑하는 사람들의 이미지를 포착하고 싶은 당신을 위해 어빙 펜과 헬뮤트 뉴튼, 리처드 에버던과 함께 20세기 인물 패션 사진의 중심에 서 있는 알보트 왓슨 사진가를 만났습니다. When I was 14 years old, uh, my father had two rolls of film left over from a holiday and a very, very old-fashioned 1930s camera. And uh, I asked him if I could take some pictures, and I did. And uh, I actually photographed my sisters. And I, I loved the experience of taking a picture and then waiting two days to see what the pictures looked like. Uh, so therefore, the first time I held the camera, I was quite excited. However, it was another five years or so, six years, uh, and my wife gave me a camera. By this time, I was uh, studying to be a graphic designer. So a combination, once again, to get a camera in my hand and to be studying graphic design, the combination of photography and graphic design uh, to me was very, very interesting. And there was something uh, to me with the camera in my hand that was just comfortable, almost like a nice sweater that you feel comfortable in. Uh, and I immediately saw a lot of possibilities. Uh, but of course, like anything that you work at, it takes time. And it took me a long time to uh, really understand photography and to be able to uh, explore it extensively. So when you look at my work, my portraiture, uh, you should be able to see a very graphic approach to taking the picture. However, uh, I always try and let the picture not become too cold and graphic. So therefore, I'm usually working with people very closely to make sure that you feel the person has a connection with the camera. So when you look at a lot of my work, you see a combination of graphics and film put together. Uh, and therefore, uh, I, I think for that, I think we're quite successful uh, in, in, in being a, a people photographer. I think photography today is a very, very powerful medium. You can express yourself, you can show other people what you've seen on a particular day, but you can also explore yourself with photography. In other words, you can find out things about yourself and how you see the world. You can communicate this to other people instantly all over the world, from New York to Seoul, uh, all the way to Paris. And this can be done within a second. So photography is a powerful medium there was no photography 180 years ago. Uh, so uh, it's, for me, a modern medium and very interesting and also very, very flexible. Uh, I think that uh, very early on in my career, uh, I did the Alfred Hitchcock picture, which I approached in a very simple way uh, and communicative way. And the photograph of Alfred Hitchcock holding the, the goose uh, was for a, a magazine and was to illustrate really a recipe that he was giving for a Christmas goose. And uh, that's why he's holding the goose, because he gave the recipe on how to cook a goose to the magazine. Now the reason it was important for me is I had never photographed anybody famous. Alfred Hitchcock was very famous and uh, of course I was nervous, but this shooting was very successful for me the way I did it and it was also successful personally to me. So therefore, uh, in a way, it was always a favorite of mine. Uh, of course, uh, hopefully, over the years, I did many 
pictures that were more important than this picture, but this one was uh, very, you know, was very important to me. And uh, uh, I always look back on it very uh, fondly. I did have some difficult times, but I, I really always managed to overcome these difficult times. And I think it was because I had such passion for photography that if I was ever depressed and you gave me a camera, I was no longer depressed or concerned or worried. So I think the camera was my solution, was my addiction. I just kept working and taking more and more pictures. Of course, you're looking for the picture to be memorable, powerful, and I'm hoping that you feel something from the individual that gives you the feeling that you're there in front of the individual. I try and put into the photo what I am feeling at the moment that I take the picture, the communication I have with the individual. So I'm always communicating with the individual, even if the picture is very, very simple. Uh, I'm always trying to put into something that it's memorable and put you there at the time that I took the picture. I was involved in this shoot for a magazine, photographing the most powerful people in America. And one of the people we had to photograph was Steve Jobs. We had him for an hour. Nine o'clock, he was due to turn up, and he turned up at one minute to nine. And just before he arrived, the PR person came up to me and said, I just want to let you know Steve hates photographers. And I took a chance on something. I said, uh, Mr. Jobs, I have some good news for you. I said, I believe I have you for an hour. He said, you do. Uh, I said, I think I can get this done in half an hour. And he just looked at me like I'd given him a Christmas present or something. He said, oh my God, that would be great. He said, I've got so much to do today. And I thought, well, why don't I just approach it like it's a passport picture so that it had a little bit of fall off, uh, shoot it against white, give it a little bit of graphics, but to keep it very, very simple. I said, I'd like you to just slightly lean forward towards the camera. I would like you to imagine that you're across a table from four or five people who don't agree with you, but you know you're right. And he said, easy for me, I do that every day. And then he just leaned forward and kind of looked. And he just put his thumb here and he just, he gave a little smile, but it wasn't a smile. He was like, don't question what I'm doing. He was actually out of there in about 20 minutes. So I did a cut from the knee up and then a close up, that close up shot. When he was leaving, the Polaroid was there and he said, can I have this? I said, sure. And he said, that's maybe the best picture ever taken of me. So I thought at this point he was just being very polite. But then I got a call years later from California saying, I need that photograph you did of Steve. Do you still have it? I said, of course I have it. We sent it out there. And that night I actually went to Lincoln Center and my phone beat. And then up on my phone came, he had died that afternoon. That photo was there on the website. So he did like it. <laughs> in the end. Unless you're born as a Mozart of photography, unfortunately, hard work is really the only way. And you should be shooting if you want to become a good photographer and then an, a very good photographer and perhaps an amazing photographer. You have to be working almost every single day of your life and not just for one hour, but hour upon hour. So the only way really to become tremendous or amazing is that uh, you have to be working seven days a week or think about working seven days a week as you, you can sit in front of great images in front of you on your, on your computer. You can look at Renaissance paintings. You can you could look at German Expressionism. Uh, you can look at American pop painters. You can look at great architectures. You can watch amazing movies. Uh, you can always be working and thinking and looking for inspiration 
getting from inspiration, not always from photography, but from all creative mediums that you would, you could be theater, it could be opera, it can be ballet, uh, but you have to really be working the whole time. I'm always looking for new things to work at. At the moment, uh, I am exploring the possibilities of the computer. Of course, I come from analog generations. Uh, I, I come from 40 years, 45 years of working in film. So now, uh, for the past 10 years, I've been working very heavily with the computer to see how I can combine my knowledge of analog with uh, uh, the modern systems of today. So uh, exploring the possibilities of the computer is what I'm working on right now. And one of the images at, uh, in fact, there are several images at the art center uh, that show my work as an analog photographer combined with digital systems. I think if somebody looked at one of my books, I would be very happy if they looked at it and said, you know, this photographer did a lot of work and he was always intent on doing very good quality. So he was always trying to produce powerful, interesting and memorable images. So he was trying to do them.